This is going to be a multi-part video. I may string it together or do it independently, but this is an old Acer H340. Uh, Acer must have sold a million of these things back in probably 2009, 2010. And originally it was a headless sort of NAS unit, a network attached storage unit. And the Acer provided you software, and uh, you you basically connected remotely. Well, I pulled it out of the closet, and uh, I've restored it. Uh, and I thought I'd make a couple of videos. Let's stop first. I want to uh, go back in and give you a refresher. Even though the unit ships headless, there's an option. You can actually insert a video card. There is a slot uh, to install the video card. However, I have done a different configuration. I have added video by using the jumpers on the board that gave me that, as well as outputs for a mouse and a keyboard here. And uh, this was a kit that was sold. You probably could still find it. And then you can uh, put a monitor and a keyboard uh, so you can work on this. Or otherwise, you can buy a, a card and put in a video card here. Now, I thought I'd give a refresher on this motherboard. In order to get into the BIOS, you have to install a jumper on your main board here. And I've installed that. You can see this red jumper I've added here. As long as you have that, it'll let you go into the BIOS setup. Without that, it bypasses it. Also, as a refresher, there are three pins here. If you jump for one and two, which is default, that's normal. But if you need to reset your CMOS for some reason, you put move this jumper to two and three. While I was here, I also put a new battery in. Uh, this unit has not been out in many, many years. So... Now, to get this up and running and modernize it, what I did was I went to, uh, it made me an, an ISO boot disk with Windows on a USB drive. And that's easy enough. You could do a search just on with Google for a Windows boot USB. This is Windows 10. Uh, and I did decide to do the Pro version. You can use Home or Pro. There's some advantages of each. Once you've created your boot disk, then you'll go into your BIOS and have it boot from the USB stick, which gets installed here on the front. At that point, it's an installation process. It's pretty slow. Uh, but I started out with this and one disk, one hard disk, and it took me, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, maybe an hour. Once the installation was complete, I gradually added more drives. And now I have it, once again, full. And uh, so I am getting ready to close the case up. Uh, it's running perfectly. Surprisingly, even though it's an Atom processor and it's slow and, and sort of boot, and working directly on the unit, it has pretty good data transfer rates, and it's used just for storage anyway. And so I've got videos and files and stuff on it. So rather than throw these units away, they still have life to them. And they're pretty good little units actually. Um, so what I'm gonna do is close the case up now. I'm gonna fire it up. I've already issued a uh, IP address to it, and I'm already remoting in, so it's all working well. So if you have one of these around, one of these old H340s, don't pitch them. As a side note, before I installed Windows, I just did a test, and I took a 250 megabyte drive, same process, but I created me a Ubuntu Linux boot stick and and same process 
and it worked fantastic. I mean, I was able to actually create a Linux bootable drive and I debated about running Linux on this. And I decided to go ahead and go with Windows since I have so much with Windows now. But it will work. You can use uh, Ubuntu or Linux if you prefer that and install that and network. You can do the Ubuntu server version also, your choice. But anyway, if this is helpful, if you happen to have one of these or if you pick up some of these, now I did check on eBay and you can pick these up relatively cheap. So if you're looking for an alternative means to create you a network attached storage unit to store your files and so forth, you might consider that option. It's still a viable unit. I know the Synologies and some of the other ones are quite pricey. Uh, so if you have some old drives around, that's good to, you're good to go. One of the things about this is it's a two gigabyte maximum capacity, but that's fine. What I like about this versus the newer Synology units, you can mix and match this thing. It's not proprietary. Um, and I've got a variety of different drives I had laying around here. You know, now if you buy Synology, they kind of lock you into an ecosystem, making you purchase their drives and such and memories. And you don't have that problem here. So anyway, I'll close the case up and I'll, I'll probably make an additional video showing you once I've fired the unit up, but I'm going to tuck it away, store it away. I'll get rid of the monitor and the keyboard. It's, it's once again, will be a headless unit and uh, it'll serve as well for I'm sure many years to come. So hopefully this is helpful. Thanks for watching.